Welcome back, wannabes and creators, to another episode of The Complete Creative, the podcast that helps you lead a complete creative life. Today on the podcast, I am super excited to welcome Naomi Van Doren. She is an amazing illustrator and has one of the best, most consistent brands you will find online for an artist. Before we get into her interview, I want to remind you that if you like this show, please subscribe and head on over to thecompletecreative.com to check out all of our awesome resources. We have an amazing audience building webinar, which you can get to at thecompletecreative.com forward slash business, which will show you how to supercharge your audience in less than 20 minutes. All right, now let's get on with the show. Take it away, Naomi. Tell us what you're passionate about these days. Well, what I'm passionate, oh my gosh, like, <laughs> so right now I am working on an illustrated novel. So my brain has been like completely like focused on working on this project. But around that project, I've been working on, um, I guess, just building up my business, like my my creative artistic business as like a whole. So kind of, it it's multifaceted. So you know, it's branding, it's elevating the products that I'm creating, it's making sure that I'm creating like a release schedule. It's it's kind of a lot. <laughs> so yeah, you caught me at a, a very busy time. <laughs> well, it's, it's great because this is where a lot of people are starting. I know you're not starting, but one of the things that I found was about five years into what I was doing, suddenly it felt like I was like, okay, now I'm going to go back and wipe everything and start again and try and do it right yes and so when you're doing the what what where is the first place that you're starting again oh like revisiting yeah well i think i think for me i was revisiting from like the beginning of like why i'm making art like i know that why but writing it down on a piece of paper and then defining the things that are important based off of that why like reevaluating like what kind of client work do i take what kind of products do i make because it then responds back to my why um because i don't have that much time to do all the things and so i have to be really selective um and i think that's important when you're starting out too to just kind of define like well why are you making the thing that you're making and um that will help then lead you into new decisions of like do you work with this person on this project or uh, is that collaboration worth your time and does that answer you know one of those questions you might have if like, why are you making that art or that, you know, creative endeavor project thing? <laughs> yeah, I love that you said that because I, I do think it all drills down to, to, to that moment. And frankly, I was similar in I kind of knew what my why was, but it took a long time to really define, like, which projects do I love and which projects are a no and why those projects are a no and why the ones are a yes and why even though this feels like it should be right, it's not right. Um, and that it took so it, it happened so much later than I would have thought that if, if I could go back and and when I go back and tell people, I try and get them to define this at the beginning. But unfortunately, you kind of don't know at the beginning, do you? <laughs> no, you don't. And then all your friends are doing all these distracting, cool things. And so that you think that maybe that's your why. And it, it isn't it doesn't come to everyone so early. So in some ways, it's it would be hard hard to pick but I think knowing that you can change things up in six months time in a year's time in five years picking something that just at least is close enough I think will give you a little bit more of a guide than just nothing yeah I I, I feel like you should pick a point at, at the end and be like well I kind of like these things when I was first getting started I ended up writing a whole bunch of different stuff like I wrote tv shows and I wrote movie scripts and I wrote romantic comedies and I wrote all of these things because like I, I I didn't know I didn't know what I what the target was it was like I kind of like this kind of theme and I kind of like this kind of tone and you know it wasn't until we did the monsters and other scary shit anthology that really I was like oh there it is I got it now <laughs> it's that thing but you were also trying a lot of stuff that you already had at least an idea that hey this is something i kind of enjoy i'm going to try it versus yeah like i mean that's that's where we all start like trying the things that we actually like i'm also not afraid to cut stuff out really quickly if it's 
not my thing. <laughs> so being um, a little bit more flexible there. Do you still have that flexibility now where you where you try new things or are you pretty much know what you're where you're going at this point? I do try a lot of new things. I don't publish them though. Like I'll try like at least in the art world, like I'll experiment with different media, just, you know, playing around with inks the other day with like textural stuff. It's not my finished work. It's not my branded work, but I can still experiment and try it and play with it. But on the flip side, like on the business side of things, everything is 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 kind of set but also it's still on its own maybe like bigger picture kind of growth pattern i don't know if that's the right way to say it basically i have another goal that i'm you know wanting to kind of shift towards um so as an artist i'm always growing i'm trying new things and i'm wanting to push myself and to be better at certain things and so rather than changing it night and day i've taken like the long run and over the last year and a half I've gradually introduced my audience to some new ideas so it's it's kind of more intentional directed change and not yeah something that totally surprises people <laughs> out of the blue can you uh so most of our audience doesn't know about who you are uh or hasn't seen your growth pat uh, hasn't seen your growth over the years so let's can we talk a little bit about like how that's changed over the years maybe take us a little bit through your journey as an artist oh sure like uh the very very beginning like how did i how did i get started <laughs> sure you can start all the way back in uh in, in high school if you want you can start five years ago however however you want to do it but you know we we talk a lot about how where you are now or the the last few years but i i think it's always helpful to hear the whole story you know going back towards the beginning not the beginning yeah definitely <laughs> Well, I'll start with the stuff that I think has helped me become the artist that I am now. So I went to school, uh, to college, for graphic design. Um, in high school and before that, I was always interested in art and artistic things. But I've also been a very, I have a very entrepreneurial kind of mindset on stuff. So I'm always looking at like new ways to make new products or like how do I monetize this? Uh, just kind of nerding out in that element or sphere. Um, so... I was already doing a lot of freelance work when I was going to college, just random odd graphic design jobs. So I decided, hey, I'll just get a degree in this. And that's kind of the beginning of what launched me into a creative career. Uh, so what I do now is illustration work. And that switch didn't happen until I want to say about maybe when was that? That was like 2014. Uh, we moved to Japan, my husband and I, and that mean, meant that I had to leave my graphic design job that I was doing. And that switch, um, the physical move, the location move, just everything kind of allowed me to reset and rethink, like, what do I want to be doing um, for the next however many years? What What is something that I can really dig into more and get passionate about? And the graphic design stuff was great, but it wasn't really it wasn't really hitting the right note. Like I really enjoyed making work that made people feel something. Uh, graphic design never really fulfilled that for me. So illustration was what I started. And I kind of just did that on my own. So I took a couple online classes. Um, yeah, just kind of piece stuff together. I was already sort of a part of like a fantasy community online as far as like an artist community. So I got a lot of my resources there. And I'm very much a self learner, so a lot of these things just came through like trial and error. Um, so I never, I never got a degree or anything like that in art or illustration. But yeah, that's what kind of set me up and kind of got me started on the path that I am now. Um, it's interesting looking back and seeing how much, how helpful it is having like a graphic design background because as a business person and what I would call myself as a independent artist where I make projects that are my own and I sell them directly to my audience. I think having some of these business tools in my back pocket have been one of the things that have really helped me grow and yeah, just do a lot more than I think people starting out are necessarily able to do because I just have the tools available to me. I mean, I said it before you, we got on the air, uh, like you have the best, most cohesive image of any artist that I know, like, and no matter where you look, it's not just the stuff that you make, but it's even the photos of yourself that you choose. Like it all, 
like tells a similar story the youtube channel all tells a story the patreon it's like it's so uh it's so cohesive that i'm not surprised that you have a graphic design degree yeah it's all about yeah communicating that even more that that story that i'm trying to tell through art and then bringing it into real life so it might be the the digital form of it and allowing my audience to perhaps hopefully put themselves in you know an environment uh maybe it's through the art or maybe it's through seeing the art on a wall and it imagines it allows them to imagine that it's on their own wall little things like that i really i, I think it's enjoyable to kind of process through those what i consider like problems like how do i make a person feel really comfortable with potentially thinking about buying a print from me because it should be really easy i, I want them to feel like hey i can imagine this thing in my home or you know a book it's yeah it all i guess it all makes sense in my head but it it'd be really hard to break it down i guess into steps <laughs> but what is the emotion that you want people to feel when they go to your website do you have do you know those yeah um so my brand vibe is very much it's it's fresh and inviting it's very it's a little bit eclectic um the the feelings that i want people to feel is escapism there's a little bit of the kind of adventure woven into everything uh, i want people to feel like they can step into an environment that i've created and just kind of get lost in in something that is enjoyable it, it's a lot of positive feelings associated with a lot of my work i find your work very calming mhm mm yeah you know not but not only like listening to you talk is also quite calming and soothing. I was listening to, I, I was watching one of the speed paints on your site right before, uh, right before the call. And like, I found that very calming and soothing. Like when I listen to your YouTube channel, I find it very, like, it's just, it, it's not, it, it feels like it's all very thought out in that manner. Yeah. I, 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 I do overthink things sometimes, but <laughs> it is it is very intentional. It's all very, very thought out, but also it has a generous dose of like just my personality and me in it, or at least my best self. Like I'm not going to bring in like my I had a really bad day kind of emotions to it, but the, the positive things I always try and push to the forefront. Yeah, I think that's. I mean, it's all so important because I'm a very different personality than you, and my brand is totally like much more like in your face rebellious like screw authority like and a lot of death grief and loss and junk and like like delving deep into the negative parts of the universe um but like i think in both those brands like you can see the the human behind the the um like you can see the the, the human behind the art like i remember still where i was walking through Worldcon in 2018 and like that was the first time I saw your art and I like literally snapped my neck and it had double take. And I was like, what is that? Uh, because, and then you look down and you're the, the, the pins are in this like a beautiful gold, like frame and everything is just so meticulously thought out. And my, my brand is also meticulously thought in a different, more haphazard way, but it's just amazing when you look at something and you're like, I totally see the story of this, of everything, uh, by just seeing it for one second. It's really hard to kind of reverse engineer that too. Like there, there are definitely elements that you can like, kind of like tricks that help allow that, you know, organization is an easy one. Like is stuff organized at your table in a manner that people can easily find what they're looking for? Um, you know, chaos is, is a brand too, but like, you know, put, put the books that are in the same, you know, series together, please. Cause <laughs> things like that, but it, the, the visuals, I guess a lot of it just comes through repetition. Um, and I'm totally fine there. I love that. Like, I like re-exploring a lot of similar themes over and over again. Um, I don't get bored with that. I think it's it's enjoyable. And it's helped me create a brand that is very cohesive and kind of speaks on its own. Yeah, and I can, like when I picture just a thing that you would put out, it always seems like there's a lot of woods and forests. There's usually some sort of animal uh, in the in, in like maybe center or like right off center frame. Like, and there's, it's, there's like just 
a lot of colors that mold into each other and that is true in your brand of like your 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 logo it's true in fox dragon which we'll talk about it's true in the prince i think i think that's true yeah yeah no that's definitely consistent throughout um i work in a lot of like series of work so when i make an illustration uh, I work in watercolor, typically. I also do digital work. But when I'm working traditionally in watercolor, it's actually really easy and kind of advantageous for me to work in with a couple paintings at the same time because I have to wait for one to dry. So I might like cycle through like three different pieces that kind of have a similar color scheme. Um, so that allows me to also have some of those themes, um, like, you know, like an animal with a, a person, like the animal companion kind of series that i've been adding to over time fox dragon stuff of course um yeah it's fun <laughs> it's interesting how your process too makes that kind of it becomes a part of the brand at least for me um i know i have friends that you know work differently and that is how they've structured their brand just based on how they work what medium they work in how fast they can work stuff like that yeah absolutely and uh, i think it's so important what you said about how you your you, your process kind of sometimes often dictates your brand and uh, and vice versa. Um, so we talked a little bit about organization as a sort of a an easy trick or hack to uh, to like help codify a brand. But you said you had a couple of others. Can you give us a couple more? So, all right, so when I think about branding and especially if you're starting from nothing. So, well, hopefully you have like a thing that you're branding, but like you don't really have something that you consider cohesive so organization that that i think translates to online as well as in person um so that 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 comes through a couple different elements online if you're thinking about that branding um a little trick i think about is just using two fonts it sounds ridiculous but you're like all right you're looking at a website you don't want it to be too cluttered you want it to be really clean easy to read simplify your fonts simplify like the clutter online um trying to think and these are kind of like design stuff too so it's it's branding design elements um what else i think not giving away like every single single piece of your process if it doesn't allow for for your brand to shine through so like there's some parts of my my painting process that are they're kind of ugly like it you know, we have a beautiful piece at the end, but there's steps in the middle that maybe aren't something that I want to celebrate. Um, so there, there's ways you can share that part of the process online. But if you want to create a brand that people are excited to come back to and especially be first introduced to, that's the key. Um, maybe consider kind of changing up where you share those kind of maybe more messy stages of a painting. People are interested in it. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying you don't have to post it like hide it on Instagram but if you have an Instagram you can you can hide those kinds of process maybe more messy stages in one of those like multi-image posts so put it the second one in not the first one um what else I'm just gonna like brain dump on you <laughs> oh there's so many things for me what was really helpful was I actually took me several books and doing several things before I could look back and be like huh these are kind of common themes and these are things that people that and then asking people like what do you like about this what did in fact our little bee mascot came from like hundreds of conversations with people about what we liked what what their favorite shows were like what they liked about our work and then like from that uh the monster anthology came which was our first big hit and then um and uh, and then we were able to sort of expand from that. And like it gave the clarity only came after the work was out there. I do find a lot that people try to get the brand before they even know like what their process is. Like my process is very messy and sloppy and like and uh, chaotic. And so that is. And like I curse a lot, and I like I, I I I share a lot of like things about like death and and grief and loss and like bones and skulls. Like that's the brand that I have developed over the years, and that's what people I think think of when they think of me. Um, so, but if I 
that that has the the process that I use and the stuff that I talk about and just how I interact with the world, like develop. Now it enhances the brand. But if I had gone out and let's say tried to create your brand, it would fit like a very poorly made suit. Yeah, well, it doesn't come from you. Like, it's not a part of what you're passionate about. And what you're passionate about is, like, these extreme kind of messy, gritty elements. So it's just, it's it's not, I would say easy, but, like, it just comes naturally. Like, you can lean into it more, I guess. No, I do. But I do think that, that what you say about easy is an important thing when you're thinking about a brand. Because there's a, I always bring, like, Hot Topic and Abercrombie and Fitch. Like, both of those are clothing brands generally and they are very very different but very successful clothing brands in their own right so um but if you look at like making if you think of the person that hot topic is going after versus the person that abercrombie and fitch is going after it's oh it's like a, it's like they are different universes but they really are selling shirts and belts and pants and such so that was another one that was really helpful for me was like, okay, like this is the kind of human I am. Like what other models out there exist that like prove that I can make a functional business? Yeah, there is a lot of, I don't want to say how much research, but I know there's quite a bit about how often as a creative, you will attract, at least as artists, um, you'll attract a lot of people that have similar interests to you. So it makes life a little bit easier if you're trying to think about, like, who am I targeting my brand towards? Because, hey, they're into houseplants like me, and they probably have a cat. So I'm good. It's fine. <laughs> it... Right. Or even if they don't, like, they are interested in things like that. Like, I am super interested. I am. We are diametrically opposed potentially in the branding that we do in our in our business but like i am also incredibly excited about your brand so i i think what what is helpful to understand about a brand is that it's going to ex like you have to make something that's cohesive that people will be like yep that's a thing that i should share or like i remember um our friend melissa when i first was like when i first after I saw you and then I saw her, I was like, you have to look at this person's art. It is the perfect, it is like symbiotic you and her. Like, I was like, you, you will love it. And I think you have to be able to, to have that so clear in your mind of a brand. Like that's to me, the most important part. Like people share a lot of Cthulhu and like monster stuff with me. And I'm like, perfect. That is consistently shared with me. That is what I am trying to convey to humans. Right. It's almost like you're almost oversimplifying things. Like this, you're, it's so, it's not, it's not like you're being like super narrow with like your interests. Like you can have many interests, but it's, it's so clearly spelled out for your audience to be able to read. And they're like, yes, that's your thing. Because you've talked about it or you've shared it in, in, your, in whatever it is you create. You, you make it a part of your brand by being consistent with sharing that thing. And then it's just, it becomes a repeated thing and people just begin to know you for it. It's, yeah. Yeah, the most, the more you, because you, I have found, so I have a very, dis a lot of disparate things, a lot of disparate, <clears throat> sorry, a lot of disparate products on my table. Right. And I have found as time went on, it was hard to get headway on any of them because building a successful brand, a lot of it is about driving people back to the same thing over and over again. So you can keep going back to the first Dresden Files or the first Walking Dead or whatever it is. And you keep, you're like, hey, I need you to keep, to keep focused on like the walking dead over and over and over and over for 15 years so that it like builds in people's minds. But if you spend too much time in these other things, people get distracted. And because there's so much other stuff vying for their attention, you end up getting lost in this, uh, this noise because there's not one thing that they can focus on. Oh yeah. I've in speaking in, as like in person shows and this probably applies online like i've actually made a, a very intentional switch over the last couple of years to not include stuff like that like 
to really take out like fan art because anybody walking up to my table, they're going to be like, well, what's this from? And if it's my own work, my own original work, and you have it right next to something from, you know, something like I had, I had a princess bride print for a little while, which I loved. It was beautiful, but it cluttered the brand up too much. It made people really confused. Like it's a distraction and it wasn't them investing in me. It was them investing in uh, a print that was somebody else's IP. So I love that you said that because I, I, I think the sh in the short game, doing fan art is very helpful to start making money. Yeah, and getting a feel for what cons are like. It's just it's so much easier. Right, but in the but people end up not being attached to you. They're attached to the brand and your take on them. Yep, they're not going to be back for more art from you. They'll be back for more art from you that might have that take on that IP they love, which is unfortunate. It's hard to fault somebody because it's, I'm not going to say it's easy. Like nothing about doing art is easy, but like it's very instantly gratifying because someone's like, that's a really cool Harley Quinn. I want it. And you're like, oh, well, okay. I mean, I'll, I'll sell you that. And then you're sell, you sell a hundred of them and you're like, well. This is working for me. <laughs> right. Exactly. Like this is working for me. And, but, and it's very hard to sit at a table and be like, these are my original things. These are things that are original, and they're like, I don't know that. But what happens over time, yeah, it, and it compounds. And like, it, and suddenly, five years later, you're like, what is your original thing that you have? And that becomes almost as um, important as as uh, as the other brand. Right. Yeah. But it, it, I guess it's more of a a longer term look on a business where it's like am i willing to invest and that's a risk too like am i willing to invest two years three years four years consistently coming back to a show or you know just doing it online with this thing that i've created and then you're the one that has to show up with all the energy and excitement for your own product because nobody's gonna nobody's gonna show you that the first time around even the second time around um but it builds so well. Like it's something that you can, you know, build off of and to no other products. It's, it's, it's way more gratifying, <laughs> at least in my opinion. No, it, it's, it, I agree. It's way more gratifying, but it is, it takes time. You know, a lot of people complain that nobody, nobody buys their book. Oh yeah. But, but, but like, I'm like, how long have you been here? Like how long have you been doing it? Like how engaged are you in the, are you out there? Like, bringing people in or are you just where watching them pass by like what is the brand awareness of this particular book because the brand awareness of batman is very high yeah and it it's so easy to be really impatient with i mean i'm definitely guilty of being impatient with some things but when you when you look at how much attention and how much more attention you have to bring to your new product that people have to be basically like introduced to like in a very like customized like we're gonna have a discussion about this cool thing that i just made versus you know batman people just know like it, they know it already they don't need a, a conversation around this new thing um it takes two or three four more times of work just to to sell your own thing but you know that's that's the the first step and then you have you know five years down the road you have super fans that are totally into it so it's worth it and that's why after I finished building everything, I was like, I did this all wrong. Oh no! <laughs> like I looked at myself. It was it was not that it was, it was not that long ago. It was like it was honestly like maybe like six months ago. Where I was like, I should have just done everything in one. I should I should be going back and building out the brands that people already love instead of completely hopping around from book this to this universe to this universe to this. Because like I come from movies and TV and like and do movies and TV, like you're always making new scripts and new IP. That's the thing. Um, but when you're selling products, you know, my Katrina books still sell, my Ichabod books still sell, uh, the Cthulhu book sells, and the other stuff is like, it almost drowns, is drowned out by, it's nice to have people, some people that like those things to, to go and like, to like, if they don't like Katrina or Ichabod, there's like si some science fiction and then there's some other stuff that they can get to. But every moment I spend talking about those 
is a, is a minute that I'm not spending building up the brands that already work. Yeah, you've already spent that extra time on these other things that could be getting you even more. That no, that totally makes sense. It 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 there's probably a balance there for different people because I know having other things to to complement your main, you know, featured project or projects is 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 fine. I mean, I do that as well, but there's definitely something to be said for just really leaning all in on that that one or however many things you've got going that are really, you know, winning for you as far as income or interests and fans and stuff. Yeah, but this is what's really hard. It is. <laughs> well, it's really hard because, like, let's say you go all in on a thing that is not a popular thing or that's not the thing. That's what happened when I started doing this is, you know, I, I, w I went all in on several things because I didn't know it was going to be the hit. I just, like, put a bunch – and that led to me doing more and more. And eventually it took – five years of me turning out a bunch of different stuff to be like oh but like these are the brand like i need to not be focused on this other stuff because like clearly these are the things that have endured over five these are the things people have come back and said i loved that these are the things that people have come back and like brought pulled other people to buy like these are the things that are like rock solid and these other things, they just didn't take off like the other that like like um like my core brands did, and that's okay. A lot of like big companies put out new brands all the time, but they are always putting the majority of their resources on the things that are working. Then yeah, for sure, they're reinvesting in those and coming out with new stuff. It it I don't I don't know if I would say you really like. Here's a question. Do you have to spend, like, is there a certain amount of minimum time to invest in something before you actually know that it's working and that it's something you should fully invest in? Or is there, is there some more, because, you know, like, we, we live in a social media age where you can kind of pull, pull your people. Is there other ways that you can, I don't know, maybe kind of get a hint at what, what might be working before you you go all in and that and that sounds very cautious I, I i'm not really that kind of person i'll just go all in too no i think that there is though the problem comes when a lot of people have interest in something but something but they may but they may all be buying a different thing like that that, that becomes really hard because like for instance i went all in on do going wide with my books when i released them and i was like oh but like I should have just done Kindle Unlimited because most of these people are in Kindle. They just told me they would rather have it wide. But really, those people were not buying. The people on Kindle Unlimited were the ones that you were making money on. Or uh, it, it happens all the time where I'm like, okay, I'm going to go all in on this product. And, I'm th and then this other thing that I was like, oh, well. It didn't work out. So, yeah, I, I think that there is a way. But it's really like the, the money's the money. That's what's like uh, uh, the, 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 even the monster anthology, which did great on Kickstarter. Like when I put it on my table, d didn't sell that well. So like even that, I think for me, I, what's really hard is it when I'm, after I launch a brand, it takes me a year to know if it's working. Yeah. No, that sounds about right. Like you have that many shows you can go to. You have that time it's been on the internet. It can be. Yeah. You can see which ones are not just selling, but people are coming back and, and liking, because that's the thing is that immediate rush of this is like, these people are buying this thing, the new shiny thing. Yeah. It's like, how many of those people are then going to come back and buy the second thing or the third thing and the fourth thing. And it's really hard when you first launch something to know whether you should even do another one, because I mean, when you're doing a first launch of a book, like a lot of it's smoke and mirrors. Like it's, I mean, you're putting a great book out there, but then it's the marketing that's selling that it's the cover, it's the blurbs, it's the, it's the, it's the pages of the few pages inside that people are reading. It's the cr creators involved. It's your excitement. That's really pushing it. It's not until people get it, hold it in their hands, flip out for, and then come back begging for more that you really know that that's the thing. <laughs> you have to wait a few months for them to actually read it too. But yeah, totally. <laughs>
Yep. And like so so people read it at launch, but then for the takes if it takes them three to six months to read it, suddenly it's like, okay, so after it's six months in, then I've sold a thousand or two thousand copies of this book. And now I have to wait six months for all of those people to actually tell me whether it's good enough to make more or whether not that it's good enough because you know at some level you're just like oh you reach a level of good where it's like probably everything that i put out is good like it's going to reach a certain level of good or i'm not going to put it out right you you know where that is for sure like in your own business and like what's what's been successful before you can kind of gauge off of that but yeah which one is better than the other one is the trick and which one is going to like captivate the people who are reading it because sometimes it's not the best one like sometimes or sometimes it's not the one that you love best but because it has that base level of that base level of uh of like goodness they're all going to be good but for me some of the things that I've made are just like that's that's like the best one to me and those are sometimes often not the ones that sell because for me at least they're the ones that I'm taking risks that is are outside of the conventional norm and so I'm like this one has so many cool elements in it and people are like but you're like mixing genres and you're like I don't even know what this is yeah it's like too many genre too much stuff like I want this this normal thing and you're like ah oh, but this is so much cooler i think i put my a bit more of my branding hat on when I am creating. And so I'm able to, and, and granted, I, I am writing and I'm also creating art. So the art is an immediate like buy, sell. People like this, people don't. And that, that I get immediate feedback on. So there's a big difference there. But um, when I am creating a piece, there are elements that I, for whatever reason, I just know it's going to do well. And I would say about 80% of the time it does. It's weird, but yeah. And there, there's other pieces that it's like, well, okay, I know I didn't put all my effort into this or just the themes I've chose for my brand and for my people. It just, it won't jive. It'll have a special thing for a certain group of them, but there's just, there's just something that I can do repeatedly. And I, and I don't want to do it repeatedly because it just feels crazy and not like a lot of fun. But there are certain things that when a theme comes up, like, ah, okay, animal companion with a character in a cool epic environment, I'm sold because it it's what people have bought from me in years past is what people keep coming back to. So yeah, I guess I, it's nice to know that I can rely on some of those things, but also explore outside that too. Yeah. I mean, I think that's, well, that's when you get to like the next level creator, right? When you have, like I have brands that I've built over a decade that like, they will make money for me if I don't screw it up until I die. And I could just like, okay, I hope like you do more. I, I'm doing another Ichabod book now. Cause I'm like, well, like that thing sold like 4,000 units over a few years. Like you just know, you just print it. And like, it will print you money. You hope unless something drastically changes or like we're doing another uh, Lovecraft anthology because that first one was so epically like sold so well even in the first few months that we're like we have to do another one of these ones and and or like if there's a more katrina stories you just you know like it, in the like like i know what it takes to make an ichabod story like i know like it, it there's these five elements that that like every issue has to have one monster fight has to have one flashback and has to have two splash pages every one of them has to do has to do those things so I think it's similar or like when I have an idea for a book, I'm like, okay, this has a female character, a bunch of monsters, uh, uh, mythology and uh, and like a lot of thriller, like a, a, a big overarching goal. I'm like, okay, well, that was the Katrina story and that's this other story that I know works. And so I think it's similar with writing or with art. But like you said, Sometimes you just want to break out of that or you have that idea and you're like, oh, what if God narrated this one? And you're like, well, no one's going to buy that, but I don't care. I'm going to make it anyway. And and then it becomes the thing that you just wanted to make. I, I, I think that it keeps you going. Like if that's if that's what you need to continue making the other work, like 
go for it. Like for me, like the other the other kind of art, you know, the the stuff that I can maybe predict a little bit more, it's still fun. Like it 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 sounds very unromantic to like distill it down to like a couple simple things that you can make, you know, make art that sells. It's not it's not I haven't lost my love for it, I guess is what I'm saying. But yeah, there is that fun element of exploration and two also that element of exploration doesn't have to be branded as well so if you just want to make something just to throw it out there and see what on earth this might be um you can either just create it for yourself and then evaluate it you know after it's finished and say hey is this something i really want to show the world (laughs) or is this a horrible mess up that i just had fun creating it for being a creator Uh, and that was it so i think yeah, there's some elements there you can consider too. The different varying levels of like, how much do you promote it? How much, you know, do you put it at, you know, the largest convention you're going to at uh, the table or do you save that for your local shows? Just, yeah, different elements and ways to to think about branching out that don't necessarily mean you're, you know, completely destroying something you've worked really hard to brand that just to have some exploration. Because and we all need that. That's it's yeah it keeps us going it makes sense yeah for sure i mean i uh it also is how you create new brands at at new offshoots of things that might be successful or what i have found even more successful than your traditional brand like i didn't know i put the cthulhu book on my table the cthulhu is hard to spell book and i was like oh i thought i knew what good sales were before i put this book on the table and it like just blew past it like blew past everything but you know uh, that exploration of 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 creating something new or doing when I did our first anthology, it was just an explore. It ended up being like, you know, a massive twenty seven thousand dollar Kickstarter campaign, which led to me doing a massive twenty five thousand dollar Kickstarter campaign on my own graphic novel, which led to a forty thousand dollar campaign on the next book that we did on Kickstarter. And you um you uh you know you without that exploration part you can't know if you have something that might be able to augment or improve upon it might be your next thing yeah it might be the next thing or just it might be the like it, pixie dust ended up being in the katrina universe so it was just like the evolution of your brand too yeah that's true i love that element of like i have this thing now we're going to kind of shift over here this is associated so don't run away but <laughs> <laughs> there's this other thing over here that you might also be interested in. I think that's fun. There, There is a lot to be said for, and kind of like what I said earlier about kind of evolving over a longer period of time. Um, I have friends that get really restless with working in one style, for example, where, you know, they might want to try something new and, you know, playing around with those things, those one-off projects that are experiments. Um, some of that, some of that's super helpful for finding finding the new thing and then maybe you do the crazy switch that's like night and day like hey there's a new thing this took off this is what i'm going to be doing now but at the same time like you can just you can integrate those you can be very intentional about how how those two things wrap into your brand like your brand isn't this one thing for forever i guess that's what i'm trying to say <laughs> So what I have now is what I've been doing, but it can it can change over time as I change. It can because it's wrapped around what I am projecting as Naomi, there is so much I can do with it from there. Like if, you know, we I don't know, I I am becoming a writer and author now. So that that is something that I've recently in the last year started including in my branding as like this is another thing that i do so let's talk about that because this is your but this is the thing that i have been we have been i've been talking about with you since we met which is fox dragon which is your illustrated novel which i mean every time i see pictures of it i'm like i want that more and more and more and more can you talk a little bit about that uh, brand and how it evolved from the other stuff you were doing yeah so my fox dragon stuff the whole idea came about through a couple of illustrations that I did early on. Um, so me as a new young artist in living, traveling in Japan and whatnot, I was 
coming back to the country and wanted to do a little bit of art sitting in the airport and decided we'll be really experimental <laughs> and try something that I've never drawn before. And so I invented what I called a fox dragon. Basically, it's a dragon that look, feels like it lives in my very whimsical, lighthearted world. It's not a scary dragon. It's very, it's very friendly. So with this new creature, I, I created a couple of other illustrations and brought it to a show. And from the feedback that I got at that show and I think one or two others, I really just, it started to clarify over the, the next couple of years to where you know, I started adding more to it. It was all very me exploring this kind of new ideas, new world, very visually. So that developed. And then I decided <laughs> um, a lot of people, so back up a little bit, a lot of people asked me as an illustrator, because my, my work is very light, colorful, why have I not ma maybe made like a, a children's book? So Originally, I thought, oh, I could do some sort of fox dragon book that's maybe an illustrated kid's book. It's, you know, kind of compact, cute. Uh, diving into that idea, though, I sat down and I was like, what would that story be? What would I want to tell? Like, what, what do I, as a creative person, want this kind of a project to be? And I decided, <laughs> I decided to do a full-length illustrated novel instead, which is you know, it's 32 pages is a children's book. Mine's 270. So a lot more pictures and a lot more pages, but it's what made me happy. And so, and it's the style of writing that I already kind of wrote when I was um, a lot younger. And yeah, so about, I want to say it was about two years ago now, I started talking to people and sharing the fact that I had kind of began exploring, uh, I started outlining a book, started kind of diving into just learning how to write. So I've done a lot of creative writing before this in high school. In middle school, I actually used to, <laughs> with my best friend, I used to share, uh, we used to write novels together. So I'd write a chapter, she'd write a chapter, and we'd share it back and forth. We'd invent languages and all that kind of cool stuff. It was fun. So I was kind of dipping my toe back into what I used to enjoy. And it was, it was really fun learning more about not only just like plot arcs and like all the kind of mechanics that go into writing, but just using it as a new tool to build upon a world that I had already built or begun to build visually. So I had about three years of art that I had been kind of just adding to like, oh, this could live in the fox dragon world. Like this image doesn't have a fox dragon in it, but maybe this is a historical piece of the puzzle. Um, so, yeah, um, writing, writing, writing took me about a year to just kind of, I guess, learn on my own. I had a lot of books. Um, I actually have an editor that helped me with a lot of de developmental editing. Um, my husband's actually really, he's a, he's quite the avid reader. So we kind of put our heads together with a couple couple times on like ideas and stuff like that. Um, well, he's not really the he's not really the idea person. He's more of the that logically does not make sense person. So <laughs> I think you need somebody like that in your life. Um, but yeah, so I'm now at the point where I have a novel and I am finishing up the illustrations for it. That's awesome. How many illustrations are there going to be? Uh, roughly 100 or so. Oh my God. That's so many. That's so many more than I thought you were going to say. That's like one every other page, basically. Every there, There is almost one illustration every, every spread. So there's a few exceptions um, where there was just, I wanted the words to work for themselves and they were fine on their own. And there wasn't any like world building element that I could add to it. So some of the pages have like, uh, like a little vignette in the corner about, you know, it might just be something that was referred to in the text. It's not illustrating the actual, like what the character is doing. It's more like, here's some little element that might be in the room or like there's talking about, you know, an object. Well, I'll just illustrate the object in the corner. So it's a little bit more exploratory kind of uh, world building stuff. And then there's other illustrations that might have like a scene with the characters in it. So it might be half a spread of, you know, the two characters in a new environment or 
uh, you know, they're running down the, the city to escape someone. So, so there's, there's action scenes, there's, there's scenes where it's just a quiet moment. Wow. There's scenes that are, like I said, like world building and there's the big wide open, like double spreads where it's like, here's the world. This is what it looks like. And you can be immersed a little bit more in it. That's so cool. And you must've had, so the book is, has to be done and laid out for you to get this done. Right? Like, yeah. So the process, I, there, there's, there are very few books that I could find that kind of fit this like layout and format, but illustrated novels as something for like young adults or adults are becoming a little bit more of a thing now. So I had a couple references, but basically what I did was I wrote everything first. I had more or less a like semi-final draft. I laid it out in InDesign and then I was able to illustrate off of my layout. So I had places where I wanted to have like placeholders for images um, and I could I could group things by chapter two so I'm not like completely throwing off my my formatting by adding an image into a chapter and three chapters down it's now shifted everything's like encapsulated in its own chapter so to speak but super nerdy but <laughs> it's fun it, it actually um, the organizational part of this project has been a little bit it's been fun but it definitely was required to get so much done and to not have to have a finished product that I could like put together and it actually fits <laughs> instead of trying to work out the layout after the fact which just wouldn't work yeah I mean I'm just trying to think of the organization that you would need to get this done I am a book nerd so this is like me nerding out about like book design and production and binding is like one of my favorite things ever so this is like the the, the structural challenges of this is like incredible but is it a ya book is it adult or middle grade or where are you aiming it aims at ya um it could almost be read by middle grade but the actual series of books there's three um it it ages with the character so she starts out as 14 and eventually um i think she'll age up a year each book but yeah cool and you're so you're gonna do this two more times Yep, I already have the second book started as far as like a rough rough draft. Um and then third book is very loosely outlined. Like I have a plan for like the plot, the overarching plot of the three books, but um as you could tell I'm a plotter. But <laughs> but uh yeah, I haven't finished finished those yet. So And you're bringing this to Kickstarter when it's done, right? Yes. Very soon. I've I'm not really set a date because for me as a creative, I don't really like having something hanging over my head. So I wanted to allow this first one to kind of process through. Granted, the second ones will, will come a lot faster because I've spent so much more time writing and now I know what I'm doing, hopefully. <laughs> um, so the the Kickstarter is going to be for a soft cover book and then I'll also do a hardcover um, version of it. And then... With all the extras, I plan on selling those at shows or online. I, I'm guessing you're going to use like a like a um, art quality paper on on them. Yes, I have a, a printer I've talked to that we were kind of picking out like what thickness of paper and it, you know the minimum amount required is still really thick for making sure that it don't bleed over. So it just means the book is going to be <laughs> quite substantially thick just based on the you know the the paper weight or whatever. But that's okay. It means it has really nice, nice quality imagery and stuff in there. I mean, I, uh, I have a, I, I, I have a recommendation for paper size and paperweight. But I picked up Sapiens uh, at a at a book fair, and that is done in an all like art quality paper. It's like it's incredible how like beautiful the paper is on like what doesn't need to be that nice of paper. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So it's just a thicker weight paper on a regular novel? Yeah, it's like, well, there are there is imagery inside of it and like color illustrations and stuff uh, because it's about like the history of humanity through this person's like um, research. But uh, yeah, I always use an 85 pound art gloss paper mm -hmm. yeah. for all of my comics. That's our, that's my standard. I, I have never deviated from that since I started doing the, um, the, the since I started printing books. Right. No, that totally makes sense. I'll probably be doing like a matte 
um, just because watercolor always looks a little bit funny, glossy. Yeah. So something that's like a semi-matte or like a satin finish is a little bit more my preference. I like, I like satin finishes as well. That's all good. <laughs> we can still be friends. It's fine. <laughs> well, I, I got the the Mixum book. The I don't know if you know Mixum. It's a printer company, and like they had all of the different f options. I'm not usually a big uh, matte fan, but I did like the satin finish that they used on theirs. All right, that's got to be that's got to be too much. That's got to be too down the rabbit hole for people. Who are listening <laughs> to this, I would imagine we've been talking for about an hour. So I think it's about time we uh, we wrap up. So um, first, why don't you tell the people where they can find you? And then the one thing that you want them to leave this with. Oh, sure. So I am really easy to find online. You can find me at NaomiVanDoren.com. Or if you Google my name, I am like the first three pages of Google. So there's Naomi Van Doren art all over the Internet. Um, I'm most active on Instagram and I also have a YouTube channel. So come hang out with me and do art stuff and advice or things that I would like you to leave with. I, I think in this kind of the theme of the conversation is pick something that you're really passionate about and maybe it's already jiving with your audience. And I would love I would love for you to lean into that a little bit more. I know it's easy to be distracted about like all the new exciting things, but I think you might find some really amazing traction if you focus in on a couple of specific themes in your work that people are really resonating with, that resonates with you and hone in on what ways can you brand that? Because simplifying at least for me, simplifying my brand down to a few key elements and speaking very clearly to that audience has helped my business grow so much over the last couple of years. And I think you'll probably find that that will help you as well. That's great. And what I love about this conversation is it's really about the long term. Yeah. It's not about like what's going to work tomorrow or the next day. It's about buckling down and like doing that incremental work that's going to get you there in five years. Yes, absolutely. And having... Having said that, um, if you have any goals, writing that down and looking at that regularly where you can say, where do I want to be? You know, granted, we can control some things. We can't control everything. But knowing what what path, where your path is headed helps so much. Like, what things do you want to accomplish? Yep. And you can always change that path over time if you get, if you get somewhere and go, oh, wow, I hate that. <laughs> This was it for me. It's okay. You can you can turn right around and continue on your path to the next thing because there's, yeah, there's always a way to get there as long as you as long as you have at least a rough idea of where you want to go. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for stopping by. This was a wonderful conversation, and I'm so happy you were able to have it. Yeah. Thanks for having me. It's been really fun. So that was Naomi Van Doren, and I hope you enjoyed that episode. I really loved getting into the nitty gritty of branding with her, and just understanding how she plans her career. I am all about the long haul. When I first started in this business, I was all about now, 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 now. But the longer that I do it, the more I understand how important it is to plan five, 10, 15 moves ahead and for many, many years. So hope you learned a lot from that. If you did, go find Naomi online and let her know how much you dug this podcast. And if you're liking all of the episodes, please hit subscribe and head on over to thecompletecreative.com to check out all of our other great resources. Thanks a lot. I'll talk to you next time.